Jews murmur about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they say, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is writing in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen. I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they die. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one might eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. I am the bread of from heaven. I am the living bread. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. But do we believe this? I once read a Lutheran pastor reproach Catholics for their hypocrisy. He say, You say, Catholic, that you believe that the Lord is present in the Eucharist, real presence, also when the Mass is over. And that is why you keep him in the tabernacle. But I tell you that you are hypocrite, Catholic. The Protestant pastor affirm, affirm it because you really do, do not believe in that. You do not believe. If I believe in that, he say, I will not leave the church all day long. If I believe that Jesus is present there, I will not leave the church all day long. He was probably exaggerating because in the end, you can be in the church all day either because you have to go to work, you have to make lunch, or you have to rest. But beyond this lyrical, literal expression he used, that Protestant pastor was right. Do we really believe that Christ is present in the Eucharist? Do we really believe it? How many excuses for not going to Mass on Sunday? That the priest does not preach well, for example, that the Mass is boring, that I am tired, that I have very little free time, and I am not going to spend half the, of the morning or the afternoon going to Mass. How many excuses that in the end, are nothing more than justifications for not telling yourself the truth. You no longer have faith. That is the truth. And in the same way, how many excuses for not going to Mass every day? It is true that it is not always possible. The sick, pe the sick person, the one who has a complicated schedule that makes it impossible to find a suitable time to go to Mass, it is true, but at least you can go to Mass on television and make a spiritual communion. But how many extra excuses? And the bottom line is always the same. You do not have faith. You do not believe that the Lord is there, that It is really Him who is in the Eucharist. You do not have faith. Or when we receive communion in any way, sometimes in moral sin, sometimes without having gone to confession for a long time. The bottom line is that you have not faith that Christ is there. And when the priest celebrates it, us if he was sweeping the house and when they 
say that oh on Monday uh, they I I do not celebrate mass because it's my rest day. But you don't realize what the Eucharist means, what the consecration means, the renewal in your hands, the renewal of the sacrifice of the cross, even if it is an incremental way, you realize, you really realize, even if you have studied theology, you realize what the Eucharist is and what it means not to celebrate the Eucharist, and you don't take communion and nothing happens, and you have no guilty conscience, and you are not ashamed to leave people without communion because it is your day off. Organize your day so that you have the day off that you need, but so that the people of God are not left without the Eucharist, and so that you are not left without celebrating Mass. I'm so sad about this. So sad that, for example, the week after Easter, the octave of Easter arrived, which are wonderful days that every day we remember an apparition of the rising Christ. And so many priests say they are tired, and that week they go, they, they will go on vacation. But where is your faith? Where is the faith of that layman that nothing happened if he does not receive communion? Or that priest that nothing happened if he does not celebrate math? The Protestants who say that we are hypocrites was right. He say We say that we have faith in the real presence of Christ, but we live as if the Lord were not there. In the same way, Christ is is in the temple. He is the Lord. He is the bread of life. How do you behave? Of course, with familiarity, because he is your friend, but also with respect, because he is your Lord. He is your brother. Yes, but he is your Lord. He does not cease to be your Lord because he is your brother. How do you behave in church? As if you were in a square, talking, moving around. Do we have faith in the real presence of, of Christ in the Eucharist? It is much more honest to say, I do not believe that is a tasteless cookie. It is more honest to say, I do believe and not go to Mass on Sunday and make excuses. It is more honest to say, I do not have faith than to say, I do have faith and do everything possible to receive communion. Christ is in the Eucharist. He is the bread of life. And He is the one who opens up for us the gates of heaven. And there is nothing better that we can do than to receive Him in our poor sinful life, than to walk on Him, thanking Him, because He wanted to be with us. There is nothing better then we can do, and if we cannot do it because circumstances forbid it, let us at least experience the great pain of not having been able to receive communion that day, of not having been able to be with Christ. Amen.